Okay, okay. So um, I think we'll go ahead and get started. Um, if you all are, uh, we try to do this thing. If you do feel um, comfortable, go ahead and start your video just so that I don't actually have to do anything today, but it makes like presenting a lot easier uh, when you're looking at real people instead of like little gray boxes. Um, but only if you're comfortable, it also feels like, you know, we're part of a community. So anyway, um, welcome uh, to, I guess this is like the sixth week or something. Um, I've kind of lost count. Um, it's always a great break for us just to see people uh, instead of the ones that we see in the lab virtually all the time. Anyway, so it's, it's good to um, see new faces. Um, and so what we're going to be presenting this week is MoleNet Enhancer. So this is a workflow we put out, I guess, maybe a year, year and a half ago, uh, mostly the work of Madeline and Justin. I don't actually do anything. And so their goal is there's so many tools now in GMPS, um, it's just like classical molecular networking, feature-based molecular networking, and in silico tools such as uh, network annotation propagation, dereplicator, uh, MS to LDA. And if those are, are nonsense to you, don't worry, we'll cover those in a later workshop. Um, but the goal is with all these things, it's, it's kind of a pain to merge them all together into some concise representation using the network as a scaffold. Um, and so this will help you uh, get to a point where it's a little bit more interpretable as well as starting to visualize things by families of molecules that we've putatively identified. So um, hopefully that's a reasonable introduction uh, to this. We wanted to keep this workshop, uh, this session relatively short um, and concise. So, uh, but the people that actually did the real work are Madeline and Mauricio. So we'll be doing this in two parts. Madeline will cover uh, some of the theory and kind of the, how it's done and why we did things. And then Mauricio will take you through an actual example um, and kind of the nuts and bolts and kind of visualizing a few things. So uh, with that being said, uh, let's get the show on the road. Um, and Madeline, take it away. Great, thanks a lot for the nice introduction, Ming. Um, so I'll just start with sharing my screen. Um, one second. And again, if you have questions, feel free to put them in the chat during this. We want this to be relatively interactive and we'll definitely have more verbal questions at the end. Uh, but if there's anything that's super relevant, we'll pull that out and address it uh, during or at the end as well. So uh, we'll definitely, it's, we'll play it by ear. Um, we just want you all to be engaged and have a good time and hopefully learn something too. That's number one goal, but also have a good time. Great, so uh, can you all see my screen? The, does the screen sharing work just to make sure? Yes, it works. Okay, yep. good, uh, perfect, thank you, great. Um, so yeah, uh, good morning or good evening again for everyone that's uh, in Europe. Um, thanks a lot, uh, Ming and Mauricio for inviting me. Uh, it's, uh, and, and Justin as well, who's here today. Um, so it's a really great pleasure uh, to us to introduce you today to some of the basic concepts and ideas of the MOLET Enhancer workflow. And as Ming mentioned, if you have questions, uh, feel free to use the chat and we can discuss during or at the end of the theoretical part. So to start with just uh, some words about uh, the purpose and motivation of the MOLET Enhancer workflow. Um, so you probably, Oh, sorry. You probably all um, encountered situations where you want to elucidate a chemical structure of your interest using um, molecular networking and GNPS library matching. Um, and maybe you get a GNPS uh, library hit for some of the structures, but also some um, remain unknown. 
And uh, so to enhance the chemical structural information for these um, other um, nodes, you maybe want to use some uh, complementary metabolomining tools, such as, for example, in silico structure annotation or um, even a substructure a discovery through MS2LDA. And so these tools all give you um, great um, additional information that you can use to create your structural hypothesis. However, they all create independent outputs in many different uh, files and formats and web inf interfaces. And this may really makes um, data interpretation and integration uh, non-trivial and uh, cumbersome. So um, it's certainly possible to combine the information from all of these different tools manually by going back and forth between the different outputs and platforms if you only want to structurally elucidate few chemical entities such as um, shown here. However, uh, it becomes extremely um, consuming and not feasible if you work with these large molecular networks such as these, um, which is really the case in most of the metabolomic studies where your biological interpretation really depends upon the chemical structural interpretation of many hundred thousands of mass spectral features. And uh, so basically the main purpose of um, Walnut Enhancer was to exactly address this bottleneck by integrating chemical structural information from multiple metabolomining mining tools, thus enhancing chemical structural information obtained within a typical metabolomics experiment. And so on the one hand, we did that by integrating and uh, summarizing structural hits from GNPS library matching, as well as in silico structure annotation uh, onto the network through automated chemical classification. So most predominant chemical classes retrieved uh, through these tools can be highlighted in the molecular network. Um, and secondly, to integrate information on subtle substructural differences um, we also integrated information retrieved from MS2LDA into the molecular networks. Um, and now, since this is only a short uh, tutorial session today, we will focus on the chemical classification part only. Um, and the second part uh, where we will cover the integration with MS2LDA as well will be um, in a future workshop. Um, so basically what you'll learn today is how you can summarize chemical structural information you retrieve from either um, GNPS library matching or diverse in silico structure annota annotation tools at the chemical class level within your network um, to create these colorful maps which give you a very broad overview of the chemical classes you might find um, within your network. And so the very first step that is performed by Molnet Enhancer is to submit all chemical structures you have collected for a given data set um, to automated chemical classification through a tool called Classifier. And so um, Classifier takes um, these structures as input and through a classification algorithm assigns these structures to a chemical taxonomy with different hierarchical levels. Um, so for these um, examples, um, classifier would retrieve that they are, of course, all organic compounds at the kingdom level. Um, then they are all of the lipid and lipid-like molecule types at the superclass level, and in more specific um, at the subclass level, diterpenoids and so on. So how do we summarize this information onto uh, the network? Uh, basically, as you know, each node in your molecular network may have a structural hit or multiple structural hits associated. So some nodes will have multiple hits, whereas other nodes will only have a single hit. And uh, what uh, the Molnet Enhancer algorithm does is it summarizes the chemical structural information obtained for one or multiple hits for each node in classifier terminology. Um, such as you can see here. Um, so, and from here, it then estimates which chemical class is most predominant within each molecular family. So um, here we can see we have mostly flavonoid structural hits within um, this example molecular family, 
So a total of 2.25 nodes out of the six nodes are also associated with flavonoid structural hits. So what MolNet Enhancer would retrieve in this case is that most structural hits of this molecular family are um, flavonoids with a score of 0 0.375. So that's 2.25 divided by six. Um, and so these most predominant chemical classes and associated scores are calculated at all levels of the classifier taxonomy. And so uh, what you basically can do um, with this information is can, you can map these uh, most predominant chemical classes onto your network. And this information can really tremendously help in narrowing down your search for specific compound classes. So if you are, for example, in particular interested in flavonoid glycosides in these examples, instead of having to manually investigate um, all nodes in your network, you could directly focus on the molecular families here um, highlighted um, in yellow, which according to the library matching and in silico tools used in this example are most likely to contain flavonoid glycoside um, derivatives. Um, so basically from 2.5% of the mass spectral features collected and matched to known molecules through library matching only. Um, we were here able to retrieve um, chemical structural information at a very broad level of over 40% um, of um, the mass spectral features. Um, so what I think is very important um, to highlight in this context and what is basically a common misconception I encounter often in the context of MOLED Enhancer is that these chemical classes that you see here, um, they don't show you the ground truth. So independent of how high the score is and what chemical classes you find within your network, it does not mean that this information is true, but uh, it remains a pure hypothesis that is based on the in silico or library matching tools you used for your data. So basically it merely shows you a summary of the most uh, predominant chemical um, classes you retrieved either through library matching or in silico structure and notation. Um, so that means the data really has to be interpreted within these limitations and it really requires still um, careful manual inspection of the results. Um, but uh, how can you use this information? Um, so as mentioned, Careful manual inspection of your data is absolutely necessary. Um, but once you have done that, um, such as in this nice example from uh, Kyobin Kang's uh, research, you can, for example, investigate patterns in your data related um, to chemical classes. So here we could, for example, observe that certain chemical classes, such as triterpenoids or terpene glycosides, um, seem to be more predominant in one um, phylogenetic clade of the plant family. Um, Ramnacea here, the, the sisyphoid clade highlighted in blue, or um, anthraquinones or flavonoid glycosides um, are more predominant in uh, the, the rhomnoid clade here highlighted in uh, red. So this kind of information can really, for example, provide you um, a great uh, starting point for um, investigating investigating patterns, for example, in a phylogenetic context and uh, evolution of specialized metabolite diversity. Um, another way we imagine how MOLED enhancer could be used is um, if you, for example, ex especially in the field of natural product chemistry, want to um, search for uh, novel chemical entities. So if you map uh, the score at the kingdom level, basically it gives you an idea of how um, many nodes in your molecular families had at least one structural hit. So families here highlighted in blue would represent molecular families that had at least one structural hit for each node, so are likely very well-known chemistries. And the ones here highlighted in red or green had uh, no structural hits for any of the nodes in the molecular family, so could hypothetically um, represent novel um, chemical entities that in this context you could directly target from the molecular network. Um, so the MOLNET Enhancer uh, workflow, uh, thanks to Ming, can now very conveniently be run through uh, GNPS. And this is also what 
uh, Mauricio will show you in the hands-on session just now. Um, otherwise, if you are programming yourself or want uh, some more flexibility, um, the algorithm is also available as R and uh, Python packages, including some example Jupyter notebooks on how to run the code and is accessible um, on, Git on GitHub. Um, also, I have just, if you want to read up after this session, I have put together uh, some publications where the MolNet enhancer workflow was used to give you some ideas how results can be described and how the results can be in interpreted uh, with the, within the given limitations. Um, and also, if you're not familiar with uh, some of the tools that uh, are required uh, before you run the MolNet enhancer workflow, there's really great documentation um, on GNPS as well that you can access here. And so it is, I think that was the, the, the short theoretical background. Um, I'm very happy to take questions or else I will directly hand over to Mauricio for the, the hands-on part. Perfect. I guess there are no questions yet, but feel free to put it, everything in the chat or refer to the documentation if you still have questions that we don't solve during the session. And let's, I guess we can move on to the hands-on. That's pretty good. Let me share my screen. So are you seeing my screen, right? Yes. The yes. Slide? Okay. Perfect. Okay, perfect. So we all have uh, access to the Google Doc where we put all the links together and I will walk you through the um, Molnet Enhancer working in the GMPS. So it's like, we already know, or probably most of you are familiar with molecular networks. So we know that we rely on the similarity of the fragmentation spectra. And if they are directly connected, it means that the chemistry are related. So they're pretty similar. Uh, can I move this? Perfect. So today we are going to use a small data set and we are going to use the classic, a classical molecular network workflow, a uh, job that it was already run, a network annotation propagation uh, job and uh, the replicator job to use in the MolNet Enhancer workflow in the GMPS, directly in the GMPS. So probably if you have already jobs that were already uh, run on uh, molecular network, even a classical molecular network or a feature-based molecular network, you can follow the same steps that we are going to show you here and do it uh, simultaneously. Just be aware that probably it depends on the size of your uh, network. It will take a little bit of time, but in average, uh, even for a small data set, if you run a MolNet Enhancer with a, one or two in silico um, uh, inputs, it will take you probably between 15 to uh, 20 minutes to run. So we provided links uh, on the Google Doc, so you can uh, feel free to link it, and then just I will show you what are we going to do with them uh, when we ex uh, explore the results in the um, uh, cytoscape. So as Madeline showed, we have the links of all the documentation. If at some point you get lost, you can just go uh, uh, directly to the uh, every step. It's, it's, it's really clear. And then just feel free to put the uh, questions here and take advantage of this session. So as I said, what do we know for this session is basically uh, the uh, job of molecular network. 
we're going to use a classical one, uh, uh, network annotation propagation, and other replicator job. Basically, what we have from the classical molecular network is we have some uh, heats. It means that some of the fragmentation spectra are uh, searched in the GMPS library, so we will have, we will have some heats uh, at some point of some of the, uh, of the molecules that are known and are present in this data set. What we use uh, the network annotation propagation is to increase or expand uh, using uh, some in silico tools to predict uh, the fragmentation spectra of molecules that are in other databases and use this uh, fragment, uh, predicted fragmentation spectra and compare with our uh, real data and then suggest a possible um, a molecule that is present uh, in our data. In that way, we expand uh, the annotations from our data set. Just remember that at some point when we talk about what is the rate of annotations from our data set, uh, we are covering sometimes like 5%, 10% if it's a really huge explorer uh, or well-known uh, data set. So it's still low. So with the in silico uh, tools, we just basically um, increase uh, the annotations level from our job. And the replicator is one, one of the workflows um, uh, that uh, Hossein Mohimani has put uh, together also when we can predict, uh, but just at peptidic um, molecules. If you have some peptidic molecules in your data set, you can use this workflow and then just basically predict all of the uh, peptidic uh, molecules from your uh, experiment. So the data set that we are going to use here is a, a, a small one from an actinobacteria uh, isolated from soils. This is a public data set that we put it in, in, the, in the massive data set that you are familiar to. So if, uh, if you still don't know at this point how to uh, retrieve a public data set from GMPS, just feel free to go to the documentation or let, on, let us know. So the link for the molecular network, the classical one, and remember if uh, the classical one is that we don't perform uh, feature-based, it means that uh, we don't rely for peak areas uh, for or the retention time, we don't consider those, just the fragmentation spectra, just the product ions that are present in your spectra to compare and make the spectral line. When you go, oh, the first thing that you uh, probably need to do uh, if you already have done this is uh, login into your GMPS account. Then you will be able to see the documentation uh, and, and the workflows. So if you link, uh, if you click in the GMPS uh, platform, then will, you will access and uh, scroll down to the advanced analysis tools where are the uh, when you go to the experimental tools, which are the ones that we are going to use in our own de development, you will find the MolNet Enhancer. When you click in the MolNet Enhancer, you will basically see this screen, which is similar to um, uh, the other workflows that we have been working, even from molecular network, etc. So you will have uh, the title uh, of the job that you want to run. Uh, that we suggest is basically give a, a descriptive uh, title, then you will always go back to your account and then just be able to see uh, your jobs. So this is a, a brief description of the MolNet Enhancer as Madeline already uh, explained, is basically we use uh, these in silico uh, uh, inputs to make a, a chemical classification taking advantage of the um, um, classifier workflow that it's also an standalone from the washer lab. Um, what we need is basically the task IDs from your uh, molecular network, which is the basic one uh, or the mandatory one. Without that, you will not be able to retrieve the information that you have. If you perform only uh, the molecular net enhancer with the GMPS ID, uh, you will always only uh, um, retrieve the information from the heats uh, that are uh, obtained from the library search from the GMPS. But if you add an in silico um, input, you will increase and expand a little bit and then we'll show you 
with the examples that we have, um, how you see these uh, uh, different uh, outputs from the MOLNET enhancer very easy in the, um, in the Cytoscape file. So the first thing, uh, remember, if you have a um, um, classical molecular network or a network or a um, feature-based molecular network, you can use or input the GMPS task ID here. So what we need is basically the numbers after the link. So if you have um, any uh, molecular network job, you will see that after all the URL, um, you will have the number, which is basically the task ID. That's the number that we need to input into the um, uh, task ID required on the first one. So if you type or copy paste and then put it there, you will have the mandatory one. With that, you will be able to run MolNet Enhancer directly. But then, as, I, as we said, uh, we always rely with some additional information that can be uh, used to explore, explore even more your data. So if you have a uh, network annotation propagation, which is another uh, in silico tool that it's in the GMPS, um, you can use that one as I, uh, uh, we included here, which is basically the task ID. When you use this task ID, then you will have the classical molecular network, the GMPS hits, and uh, network annotation propagation uh, output, which is basically in silico uh, or predicted uh, molecules that are present, potentially present in your data. With those, you will have at least uh, one in silico input. If you have peptides, and it's possible that you have it in this case from the amicolatopsis, it's an actinobacteria from soil, so it's possible that we will get some um, peptidic moieties there. And, and if we have time, I will show you a little bit uh, later uh, what is the bar quest also, <clears throat> uh, and what that means. With this, you will have a, a task ID uh, from two uh, in independent in silico uh, tools that will help you to uh, expand the annotations of your data set. Then that way you will have your MolNet Enhancer job with a title that you will easily find uh, and the tasks IDs that are required. If you don't have any other uh, in silico input, that's why I put it here, and then it's basically by default, it's included as none. So with that way, you will be able to run your MolNet Enhancer. Don't forget that um, uh, to include your email, because as soon as the job is finished, it will send you automatically uh, an email with the link of the MolNet Enhancer job that just finished, and then you will be able to which is one click, and then we'll see the next uh, screen. So when we have the, if at some point you are get lost with this, we have also the links for in the Google Doc or here, we just directly click in the link and then you will have the, um, uh, the finished job of the MolNet Enhance. So the screen that um, you will see after you finish uh, your job or, or after you receive the email that you, uh, that you run, then you will see this screen with basically the output of the MolNet Enhancer. When you go, it's in advanced views and experimental views, and you can click direct Cytoscape preview download. In that way, you will see that's a really nice thing uh, that Ming just put it together, super easy, because it shows you, as Madeline showed uh, in the first uh, part of the theory, is that you can visualize at least at uh, some uh, classification uh, level the molecules that are, or the features that were detected in your data set. In that way, you just can uh, click and download Cytoscape file, and you will be able to open it directly in seconds uh, from your, um, in your computer. So remember, you have to have uh, installed a, a Cytoscape 
any version uh, we're using here from up to uh, 3.72. <clears throat> In that way, that's basically how you have um, the outputs from the MolNet enhancer. And it's probably I will walk you through to the real uh, Cytoscape uh, file because it's one way that I use uh, and it just give some advice is, is that you already have information from your samples. You know what you are running, you, you know what you are analyzing. So at some point you want to see what to expect uh, in terms of, for instance, in this case, actinobacteria versus culture media. You are not interested in what is the uh, blanks or what are the culture media molecules, which is very complex because you are only focused on the actual metabolites that are produced by your bacteria or in terms of plants or whatever sample you are analyzing. So in this case, that's the final output that you will see. And I was like, at this point, if everybody follow um, uh, the step-by-step, -step, you will be able to see this screen in your computer. And if not, uh, just feel free to ask and then we will let you know what, what was going on. And in that case, I will just stop uh, here the presentation. I will go directly to the Cytoscape files because I, I want to show you is um, also what happens if you run your MolNet enhancer without any in silico uh, input. And then is what is the information that you got? versus what happens if you run your MolNet enhancer only with one of the in silico tools? And what happens if you combine uh, several um, in silico tools and then you will see the complexity. And at the end, uh, if we have time, I will show you what is the uh, extreme scenarios when I'm really happy to, to discuss because when we read a paper, we see that everything is working, but when we run our own data sets or the experiments that we are going on, then all the issues that start arising, it's like all the questions that you have and why it does work in that case and why it doesn't work in mine. Um, so at this point, I'm going to finish this. <clears throat> and we'll share another screen. And I hope you have questions right now? If not, we just move on. So here there is a question like, um, or is you like to run NAP or individual molecule family? Ah, that's one thing that I, I would like to emphasize too. Uh, if you go to the documentation, probably to get familiar with the uh, network annotation propagation, the suggested part uh, of the network annotation propagation is like um, if you if you have a, mol, uh, a, a molecular family of interest and you want to explore, as Madeline say, uh, these ones doesn't have annotations, which probably are the ones that we want to prioritize. If you take that uh, molecular family and then just run individually the NAP on that case, then you will get the in silico prediction for that specific job. But in this case, and that's really useful for exploring a molecular family. In this case, if you want to see the molecular families at, the, at least some class, level of your entire data set, that's how you run the entire uh, data set. Uh, um, even with NAP, you run the NAP from the entire. Of course, it's not perfect because you are running and you are relying with a very extreme um, example where you have probably not uh, candidates for most of your, of your um, detected features. So, if you are at this point uh, with the basic one, I will show you one of the screens that I have. Let me share the screen. I will show you this and then we'll open our questions uh, quickly, just in case people are asking a lot here. 
So I assume that everybody, ah, okay. So let me show. The first thing, if you go to the Google Docs, let me see what is the Google Docs. We already have a, we run everything and then we run the classical molecular network, we run the NAP job for this, we know we run the data replicator job. So what thing that I would like for you to do is go to the step nine in the in the step by steps in the Google Doc, and then I would put it here a small net enhancer without using any in silico input. When you click in that one, and then you uh, click in direct site escape download, that's how I will show you what we get from this which is basically running a Molnet enhancer relying only on the GMPS IDs, which means that it's gonna be very limited because if you have five annotations, 10 annotations, and they are very sparse, it will really hard for the workflow to predict the entire um, uh, uh, classification, for, uh, even at the, um, uh, at the class level. So let me share one of the screens that it's in theory that's something that you will see. <clears throat> Classical and then share. So what I want you to see, I guess you are seeing a cytoscape window and what i just colored here was basically the annotations from the um <clears throat> that we have from the gmps right these are the only hits from this um from this data set so we see in in orange all the gmps ids from this molecular network right In this case, what I do, uh, and I will show you, is basically when we go to the um, mapping uh, here in the image, sometimes you have, or most of the time, that you run a, mo a molecular network, you have your metadata, which is basically the sample information. You know where the samples you run, etc. So in this case, we have uh, four basic groups. We have the strain of the actinobacteria, the culture media, and the blanks, and the quality controls that we run, and then we map them uh, with some colors. Let's say in this case, I will map it as uh, blue colors, uh, the ones that are from the strain, and in yellow in the, from the culture media. But no worries about the color code, that's not the thing that I wanted to show you. And here in the field color, uh, we will see is um, in orange, all the IDs on the GMPS. That's basically the thing that the annotations that we have from the um, uh, molecular network. What I'm going to share the screen now is, <clears throat> okay, so you will see uh, another thing that I, before I forget, is that I color code the um, metabolites from the actinobacteria as blue and the culture media as yellow. So if you want to see the molecules that are annotated, you will see the names that are basically in the GMPS, etc. So you will see all of them, even if they are like um, peptides or, or some small uh, D-peptides or uh, amino acids, etc. you will see uh, in that way. Now, I will show you the Molnet Enhancer. Only with the um, GMPS IDs.
perfect. Okay, so this is the screen um, of the MOLNET enhancer that was obtained when you don't use any in silico input, which is basically in the, in the um, uh, output that you have is that it, when you go to the field color and you will see that all the classifier outputs at the super class level are mapped in these rainbow colors. So you will see that you, when you have some red, you can change this, you, you can customize this based on your, on, your, on your samples. When you have these not matches, then you will see all the red ones that are not uh, any um, uh, information at the, at the super class level uh, from, the super, uh, some the, from the classifier um, workflow. So at the end is basically you have a few annotations that help to run the classifier uh, workflow and then get a um, MOLNET enhancer overview. But if you go with the first nap, I guess everybody is, is in this case. Then what you are seeing, well, I, uh, I guess we, we can change, I changed the colors of the original output, but it's basically something that you can do uh, in this case. I just go to a super class or whatever, uh, even if you want to check in the subclass level, you can do it. And uh, let's do it that way. If you want to map uh, the super class at the subclass level, and then you just, um, You want to see, then at the end, you will have a better picture in terms of uh, chemical classes that you will see uh, from your data set. So if you compare when it's something from the, when you rely only on the GMPS annotations, which of course that we know that are, are low, uh, even for small data sets, I just wanted to show you and, and make it clear that you don't expect 100% coverage because unfortunately there are several reasons that explain why we don't get uh, several annotations. And one of them is that we don't have all the um, identified uh, spectra uh, in the GMPS. It's possible that probably some known compounds, but the fragmentation spectra has not been annotated, so we will not see it. So that's why it's important to emphasize that whatever you find a new molecule and or even a known one from your data set, you can just annotate it directly in the GMPS that will help you and help other people. And then in that way, you will see uh, different levels uh, of the colors that help you to prioritize. Okay, I want to study these ones or, or the other ones or one molecular families. And as I said, sometimes, or most of the time, you have the uh, information from your sample. So the same way, I do, I do the same thing here. We focus on the, okay, the molecules that are produced by the strain. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to explore, spend time uh, working um, in the molecules that are from the culture media. So in that way, um, something that I, I will show you is basically, when you have in this way, you have the, uh, in your cytoscape, you can visualize the uh, output of the MOLNET enhancer as it is. But you can also uh, click in here in view and show graphic details. And then you will see the mapping of your, of your sample information. The ones that you map it in this case that I use, for instance, from the, um, strains and the culture media, 
but you also have the information if you use classical molecular networks, sometimes you use the six groups that are uh, uh, part of the uh, GMPS uh, classical molecular network. And then you can click them and then just transfer to the selected column and visualize them. In that case, you see that there are a lot of molecules that are only uh, produced by uh, the strains, but they don't have uh, any annotation. At least with the, with the NAP, they will have uh, some classification level. And it's something that you have to decide and then prioritize uh, for those uh, that are uh, there. Now we'll quickly go to the replicator in the same way, in the same fashion, and remember that in the, the replicator, what you get is that if you have any peptidic moiety or a molecule, then we'll help you with some uh, inputs. In the replicator, specifically for this one, we're not like at eight or 10 um, candidates from this. That's why I wanted to show you at the end uh, the, the, the VARQuest input, also map it in the MOLNET enhancer, and then we're going to the specific example very quickly. Let's go quickly with this, and then I open uh, to questions. <clears throat> So if you click in the in the Google Doc in the MOLNET enhancer uh, with the, the replicator input, then you will follow the same step and then click and then direct a uh, cytoscape download. You will see that they are uh, same way. Uh, map it at the superclass level. You will see some classes and then you will see that it's also limited because then you are trying to use some of the uh, annotations that are predicted from the uh, the replicator workflow and then you will see some of them. And then most of them are like uh, at the super class level, um, uh, annotated as organic acids and derivatives. And we'll show you that probably there are a lot of molecules that are uh, at, the, at the super class level. But remember that you can always uh, go there and then if you want to map at the subclass level, et cetera, you can do it that way and then just visualize uh, using at the, same, at the same way. And again, you see that it's very limited. What I wanted to show you now is the, the, replica, the bar quest, which is uh, something really interesting because with NAP, you are uh, restricted to some uh, databases that you are using. Even if you, well, you go to the um, documentation, you know that you can also provide some uh, um, databases from you uh, to map all the fragmentation spectra that are in your database. From the replicator, you will see uh, some peptidic molecules. But sometimes you don't have the specific annotation from the, from the peptide. Sometimes you have variants of them. Sometimes you have one that is similar, but it's an amino acid or the amino acid is it's modifier, etc. There is an hydroxylation uh, uh, additional that you cannot get from strictly directing from the uh, uh, libraries that you are using. So in this case, let's go to the, um, the one that I added as extra in the Google Doc. Just very quickly. I added in the 13 point with item, which is small net enhancer with NAP and VARQuest. And you can click that. Uh, it was a clone job and then just run it with NAP and with VARQuest. And VARQuest is basically looking for variants of the peptides that probably are present in your data. And what I wanted to show you is what we got from this. So what you see here is, and I hope everybody is following, but you see this when you compare this versus the initial uh, classical molecular network with no in silico input, then you have differences of the annotations 
at the classical level, uh, at the um, class level from the classifier. So you see that at least most of the molecular families, which are like bigger uh, uh, connected uh, features, receive at least um, an annotation at the superclass level because it relies on all the hundred um, candidates that we get from the VARQuest, specifically looking for variants of the peptides. And what I wanted to show you also in this case that you can explore this in your, by your own, what I wanted to show you is one of the nodes, um, <clears throat> and then you see it's very tiny. And I wanted to emphasize, and with this I'm going to finalize, is that probably you care about the, some priorita prioritization tools that you want to uh, decide what uh, molecular families to, uh, to focus on your, for your investigations. But what happens sometimes is that it depends on how you run your molecular network. Some of the molecules are pretty new or are just uh, typical from your own data set or are interesting for some other reasons. And then if we go there at some point, this help us to prioritize this. And I said uh, before that we focus here on molecules that are produced by the actinobacteria. And then we see here that we have a 750, uh, 757 uh, uh, MZ uh, value for uh, an organic acids derivatives. And what I'm going to show you is what is this molecule. With this, I'm going to end and then open for questions. So what you see here is basically an interesting case. The data set that we are studying is an amicolatopsis uh, SP, which was um, uh, an actinobacteria, was isolated for some other group from Jeremy uh, Wright uh, from Canada, uh, from Ipsosoil actinobacteria. And there are a few metabolites that have been described for this specific strain. And which is interesting is that I uh, only guess it was in 2011, I have the paper here, um, uh, I will share it for you if you are interested is that VARQUEST suggested the presence of amicalin. Amicalin is a side of four, which was reported uh, from this um, amicolatopsis SPAA4. And the interesting part is that the VARQUEST suggested, okay, we have the amicalin with a small modification. It has an, an extra hydroxyl, a, potentially in this part of the, of, the, of the molecule, which is in orange. In that case, that you see that how in silico tools help us, even if we have a single um, a fragmentation spectra that is not related to any other one uh, in the molecule. And even though those are covered by the in silico tools and provide, and then at the end you get a chemical classification using uh, classifier, and then you end it with some uh, meaningful and true uh, classification using the molnet enhancer. So this is basically running from the different scenarios when you have uh, highly covered uh, molecular families versus when you have even one single uh, small molecule that it's consistent with the, uh, with the um, samples that you are analyzing. And in this case, I will just end it here and open for questions. And I hope you uh, were able to run all the, uh, uh, and understand what is the usefulness of, of MolNet Enhancer in terms of what you input and what your output and how you can interpret um, the data.